Review, 2023 Porsche 911 GT3 RS seeks the perfect lap. The array of buttons on the steering wheel of the 2023 Porsche 911 GT3 RS boggles the mind with visions of finding the perfect tune for the perfect lap. From the tiller, I can not only pick the drive mode, but also adjust both the compression and rebound of the front and rear dampers through 8 settings each, chose the locking percentage of the electronic limited slip rear differential both on and off throttle, manually adjust to Formula 1 style drag reduction system, DRS, and pick from 8 settings for the traction and stability control. It's heady stuff, confusing, daunting, and exhilarating all at once. The roughly 3-mile track that poses the possibility of a perfect lap is a combination of the north and desert courses at the Thermal Club, outside of Palm Springs, California, and the pro at the wheel of the lead car demonstrating the perfect line is either Patrick Long or Jorg Bergmeister, two longtime Porsche Works drivers. I'll have three cracks at finding the perfect lap. Engage. Session 1 o'clock, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. For my first run, I opt for the recommended track mode and leave the fine-tuning for later. The default settings are 0 for the damper rebound and compression front and rear, on a scale of minus 4 to plus 4, 0 for the ELSD both on throttle and off, also on the minus 4 to plus 4 scale, on for the traction control and dynamic for the stability control, there are also off settings and 1 to 7 subsettings. The DRS is in dynamic downforce instead of low downforce mode. I trust these settings as they were used for 95% of the car's development, and the development driver just happened to be Bergmeister, who is driving the lead car. As we enter the track, the white 911 GT3 RS gets up to speed quickly and in a way that few cars can match. The naturally aspirated 4.0-liter flat 6 screams a throaty howl through less deadener as it winds its way up to its high 9000 RPM redline. The flat 6 uses new camshafts with modified cam profiles and a motorsports derived single throttle intake with solid cam followers to increase output by 16 horsepower versus the standard GT3, for a total of 518 horsepower. While the GT3 RS is fast, with a 0 to 60 miles per hour time of acclaimed 3.0 seconds, the power doesn't hit immediately like it does in a turbocharged car. Peak horsepower arrives at 8,500 RPM and the relatively low 343 lbft of torque maxes out at 6,300 RPM, so the sensation is strong but not violent initial acceleration followed by power that builds relentlessly as long as my foot stays in it. The power flows to the rear wheels through a 7-speed dual-clutch transmission rather than an 8-speed like other 911s. It has shorter gear ratios and it weighs 44 pounds less than the 8-speed, which both play into the GT3 RS track mission. The acceleration is a thrill, but stopping and cornering are where this car is meant to shine. My test car for these first few laps has the standard iron brakes, which comprise 16.1-inch front rotors with 6-piston calipers and 15.0-inch rear rotors with 4-piston calipers, but more than mechanical friction is helping the car slow down. The DRS can generate downforce equal to the weight of an NFL offensive line plus a blocking tight end. Yes, all told, the DRS and other aero measures produce a maximum of 1,895 pounds of downforce at 177 miles per hour, twice as much as the 991.2 GT3 RS from 2019 and three times that of the current 992 GT3. I'm not coming close to that speed or the 184 miles per hour top speed but the car makes 895 pounds of downforce at 124 miles per hour and a few quick glances show that I'm topping 130 miles per hour on this track. By my calculations, it's like three of those linemen are helping the car stop, and maybe one or two of them are pushing it to the pavement in the corners. A series of ducks and scoops, plus a front wing under the nose, a rear diffuser, and a massive rear wing create all that downforce and achieving it took some clever workarounds. A revised cooling system enables much of the car's aerodynamics. Rather than three front radiators as used in other 911s, the GT3 RS has a single center-mounted front radiator that offers 32% less cooling area but is robust enough to handle all of the necessary front cooling duties. 2023 Porsche 911 GT3 RS 
The single radiator opens the outer front air intakes for airflow that generates downforce by pushing the air up through a pair of nostrils in the center of the hood. That equipment takes up the space normally used by the frunk, so there is no front storage. It also exposes the front suspension components to airflow, so Porsche redesigned the double front wishbones with a wind-cheating teardrop shape that helps them add up to 88 pounds of downforce. The two-piece front wing under the nose is electrically adjusted. It can flatten out or tilt in 0.3 second to increase front downforce by 80% in conjunction with the rear wing that helps create up to 1,322 pounds of downforce at the rear. When the front wing tilts, a hydraulically adjusted blade of the two-piece rear wing tilts forward 34 degrees to act as an air brake. This blade reacts within 0.35 second. While I could control the DRS via a scroll dial on the steering wheel, I don't have to worry about it because dynamic downforce automatically adjusts the front and rear wings for optimal longitudinal and lateral dynamics. Even if low downforce were engaged, the system works automatically if the speed is over 62 miles per hour, the throttle pedal is pushed to at least 95% of its travel, the revs top 5,500 rpm, and lateral acceleration isn't in excess of 0.9 g. Chasing Bergmeister, I'm making most of that happen as often as possible and he's encouraging it. Other aero is at work, too. The GT3 RS uses the widebody from the turbo, and rather than engine cooling, the ducts in front of the rear wheels provide brake cooling while reducing air resistance at the rear. Side blades at the front and rear wheels improve downforce by allowing air to flow out from the wheel wells, as do louvers above the front tires. Air warmed by the radiator flows through the front nostrils and is directed to the sides of the car by air blades on the roof. This ensures that cooler air flowing over the body will enter the engine cooling duct forward of the trunk lid. I can't say I feel the effects of the car's incredible downforce either during braking or in the corners. That takes a racer's feel, but it's probably helping me maintain more speed through corners. The standard iron brakes are more than holding up their end of the bargain, providing a firm pedal and strong stopping power time and time again. As for the corners, the 911 GT3 RS feels like an even more capable version of other 911s I've driven on the track. The 992 generation Porsche 911 is seemingly perfect in its imperfection. The engine hangs off the back of the car behind the rear axle where it should cause the rear end to step out of line, yet somehow the car attacks corners with balance and stability. In the 911 GT3 RS, that unmistakable stability and neutral balance is there, there's just more of it, and springs 50% stiffer than those in the GT3 limit the 911's already limited body lean. The turbo's widebody accommodates a 1.14-inch wider track and tires that are 20mm wider, 275-35 or 20 front and 335-30 or 21 rear. Standard rear-wheel steering contributes to the stability by steering slightly with the front tires through high-speed corners and helps the car cut a sharper line through low-speed corners by turning up to 1.5 degrees opposite the fronts. On this car, the tires are the standard sticky Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2s, and Porsche also offers even stickier Sport Cup 2 or tires. For the most tire contact patch on the track, which is already aided by those wider tires, Porsche has set up the car in the recommended track alignment with minus 2.45 degrees of camber at each tire instead of the standard minus 1.3 degrees. I'm leery of exceeding the car's expansive limits, but the Michelin's just grip, the car rotates predictably through corners, and it's easy to put the power down to rocket from one corner to the next. At the end of the first session, my confidence is starting to build, but I still don't know how all the steering wheel adjustments can affect the car's handling character, yet. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.